very much. Uh, so, uh, I would like in a more or less provocative way to ask if uh, you are not trying to parameterize and quantify architecture instead of the, the traditional way, which is the, the, the intuitive way of doing it. I don't know if this is a still intuitive question, but it's, it's still intuitive, uh, I would say. I mean, um, uh, at least, uh, for instance, the, the design interface uh, produced by Rhino plus Grasshopper, which, which is very much in use in the case, it's very intuitive, even for programming, for learning programming. Uh, so it, it, it really brings computation methods into architecture in the way that architects are uh, used to, to, to produce architecture. So it's, it's still intuitive and the intelligence of this uh, design system that uh, came out of uh, McNeil uh, it is really based on, on, on that. It keeps uh, the intuitive uh, components of the design process. It's very much related with, uh, with that design environment. Uh, there are other softwares that still have some, uh, uh, also very good design environments, but this one is, I think, is particularly good in the sense that it really brings uh, all the things that uh, many researchers have been uh, you know, claiming for a long time that computer, computers can improve uh, architectural <coughs> solutions, can bring a lot of more intelligence to the solutions, but uh, it still keeps that strong characteristic of architecture uh, process, or design process, which is the intuitive part. And, and that's the great thing about it. So I, 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 I totally believe that it's still an intuitive process. Uh, the only thing is the tools allow us to have uh, um, a strongly informed process, and that's the most important thing. So the, the flow of information is stronger, uh, it's deeper, and in that sense it allows us to produce uh, uh, better archite architecture. Probably what Christian was uh, <laughs> showing that since uh, still a little bit too um, um, too tight in, 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 in a uh, mathematical yes. world but uh, still I think it's very interesting the, the, the approach that solving you know simple problems step by step and then you add some layers of, yes. uh, uh, of complexity and there will be a, a, a point where Somebody will question, probably I will question, uh, um, why rooms? I mean, when we design a house, many times we don't think about rooms as containing spaces, but spaces uh, that you know have subtle uh, differences between uh, each other that you know allow us to understand a certain functionality of a space which continues to another space which. Uh, specializes in another function, and then you, you don't really have the partition, so it yeah. becomes fuzzy the way you think about spaces, and, and that will probably be the you know the most difficult uh, part in, in this uh, uh, the most difficult complex more more complex step in, the, in that process. Yeah, but I think two things. One thing is that what I'm doing is on a very abstract level and then it's always open that it can be modified. But the other thing which is uh, the, the basic answer is that like if you see in Europe the tradition is not growing so fast so there are not so many houses you know building that rapidly. but if you go to Asia it's like the population is in billions like the population of India is 1.28 billion which is twice the population of the Europe. And I mean, thousands of people in India, they never go to architect. They don't know what is, who is architect, what they do and all that. They have heard it somewhere. But
but this is how they design. So they design their house themselves. That okay, I have designed five rooms, and I design in this way that this room should be close to this, and they have something. So it's like it's if a very simple tool is available which has some logic, so it, it can be easily reach to a very basic user who don't know much about the architecture and all that. So one idea is that, and the other idea is to always keep modifying it. So that it, it can be very very more useful tool for architect. And the other thing is that the the, the point of doing it on abstract level is that it should not restrict itself to architecture only. It can have many other applications. So that's why I also like this in electrical engineering they call it VLSI design. So in that there there are particular chips and the idea is to arrange them chips. Some way, so there you don't have this open space thing. So that's why maybe what I am doing is on more general way. But yeah, I won't trust it to to architecture. Hello. Correct. You are if I'm wrong, if you put this, I thought this panel was particularly interesting because uh, the three teams they more or less, if I am allowed to say it, the same um, the same productive idea that seems to be supported by a kind of formation in attitude, which is a formation with a, a very important mathematic component, which is very typical of British uh, uh, university, by instance, but it's not because of the portal, by instance. And uh, I would like to ask if that's um, really an important question that this formation, this mathematical formation, is really necessary to do this kind of work as you want to do. Sorry, yeah, okay. I already if, uh, if there's this mathematical formation you have to have as basis to do this kind of work is um, uh, a necessary characteristic to um, allow us to, to work on this kind of uh, programs and on this kind of work that you're doing. I really have it. I'm having a lot of problems to uh, from theory to computation because it's not just mathematics but also programming and, uh, and science and so mm, And also the thing with um, the jobs that uh, he makes, I'm trying to represent uh, uh, the logism, trying to make a volume by the patterns uh, using a topological form, but it's difficult to represent a form that is just in relations and not space. I mean, when I draw a, a line to represent a, a space, uh, people who, who see it sees and looks at, at a, a physical form. So the limits from the, and I mean, when, when he represents a, a square, I don't think the square is the, the form, but the relation between the edges is the important. And I think the, the, the problem to, to have a, a so much magic approach to architecture. Because your references are very much, you know, like, um, uh, 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 Alexander yeah. and uh, uh, Lionel March, yeah. which are formally typical versions uh, of uh, university English. English. Yeah, yeah. Well, well uh, um, uh, I, I think mathematics uh, was uh, an important role uh, in um, in architecture and, and in, in music. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm quoting Frank Lloyd Wright. Okay, <laughs> but I, I really do believe that also. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, I, I think architects would, uh, you know have uh, a stronger um, ability to deal with certain kinds of architectural problems, uh, especially when, when they uh, tackle complex problems. And, and that especially at, at the urban level occurs systematically. Uh, uh, so having a stronger formation in mathematics would definitely help, especially some, uh, some formation in statistics, uh, it's extremely helpful for uh, um, 
urban analyses and, and, uh, and connecting that information with the design workflow is also very important. So uh, I believe it, it, it's really part uh, of the approach uh, to design. In, in any case, um, uh, I'm Portuguese, I, 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 I have my, uh, uh, my degree uh, in Lisbon, and, uh, and also my master's degree was also in Lisbon, only the PhD was in, in, uh, in Delphi. So, um, and even the PhD was, was taken 25 years after I opened the, 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 the office. I started working in architecture. So I had a lot of work uh, in architecture, with Portuguese methods, Portuguese way of thinking. Uh, so it's probably, this is probably a, a reaction towards something that was lacking in, uh, in, in, in that I felt was lacking in, in Portugal. You know, kind of precise approaches to things uh, uh, that uh, um, are very difficult to understand to begin with. And if we don't have, uh, you know, kind of strict methods to tackle these problems, we can only, you know, speculate about things mm -hmm. and not really uh, analyze things deeply uh, and, and, and start to understand them. Uh, for instance, what, uh, uh, what Jerome presented this morning um, is basically producing a lot of tools to understand you know, partial aspects of uh, urban elements. And it's mapping a lot of information about how squares behave. And the knowledge is gained out of combining all that information and, and see how that information uh, uh, correlates. And, and new knowledge can come out of that. And we can understand the complexity behind uh, this, uh, um, these complex things that we find in cities. And, and I would say that the only way to really gain knowledge progressively is to have a very uh, you know, uh, uh, um, strict way of looking at things, of uh, uh, strict methods of uh, analyzing the problems, uh, but not separating them from uh, the, the design production. I think the two things should be connected. So the production of knowledge should be simultaneously uh, used with the production of design. So I usually try to connect those things. And that's also the reason why I think the intuitive part is very important. Because uh, if the system, uh, let's say, conducts to a final solution without giving the possibility of you know, testing even absurd spaces of uh, 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 design, uh, then we just do things because the machine tells us to do. And it is important to do those, to explore those absurd spaces of design, but give, but, but, but have some feedback on the properties of those uh, design spaces. And that's the reason why I think that the in, in, intuitive part should be kept in a model. Uh, but the analysis, the analytical information should be uh, uh, continuously uh, uh, seen. So the, 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 the best systems would be the ones that can give you in real time information about what you're doing. Interactivity. Interactivity, Interactivity. Yes, exactly. Very well, at this point, open to discussion. I repeat what I said. Uh, 
way. We have the researchers that are they that's needed. That those research let's see it's not needed and not necessary but it would be a complete mistake that all the people, all the architects have the same uh, the same use of knowledge and skills in uh, in the use of those mathematical well that is not to say that uh, I think that uh, every architect I would say everyone should know mathematics. <laughs> not uh, everything, but uh, some basic. Not the basic, the kernel concepts. First, the use. It is abstract thinking. That is uh, the most important. They must be used, they must be skilled in abstract thinking and mathematics really do, do that thing. The practice of mathematics helps us to do such a thing. We must say that the mathematics they are using is not the mathematics that uh, where we were used to, to use. It's not the, well, they are not focused in the quantities. The quantitative mathematics was, uh, well, actually most part of the people think the uh, mathematics is dealing with quantity. And it's not the case uh, nowadays. You know, not logical language uh, categories and so on. They, do, they treat qualities and not quantities. <coughs> and this is very important. Uh, uh, I have nothing uh, against quantities as uh, quantifying the world was one uh, of uh, our, uh, our humankind greatest uh, achievements. But, uh, the treatment uh, in um, the same form of the treatment of qualities as uh, was made by quantities, I think it is very, very, uh, very important. And they are treating qualities and not uh, quantities. Of course, those more, many of those qualities are also quantified, but it's not uh, extremely the uh, relation. <coughs> uh, and, uh, Treating qualities is much broader, broader than uh, treating uh, quantities. It's, uh, it's all our thinking is about what qualities. And uh, well, if we train our thinking to deal for for with qualities, I think that uh, would be uh, right. This is treated uh, to deal with qualities those from a method in an explicit way. That, that is to say, we know what, what we are doing. We have, uh, we can trace our activities. That is to say, we can say why, uh, when, uh, everything we can situate in our, our activity and we claim from the question of the consequences of what uh, we, it's information informed, uh, Well, there are several brushes, uh, but uh, I think uh, well, the panel was uh, chosen by them to treat them in a certain way. Uh, uh, the production rules to produce, uh, to produce uh, final results, I would say, uh, we saw the space syntax is more theoretical, and there are situations and make conclusions uh, from uh, uh, space syntax is uh, what we in form as the most uh, uh, more uh, close to a, a theory uh, because it related more deeply the notation on connotational semantics. Uh, well, here the, the theory is embedded in the production rules. There is someone that uh, has to Take that to me. I think the production rules are uh, in, uh, in the artificial intelligence, intelligence we call their policies. Uh, we cannot always, uh, when something enters input in the system, the uh, intelligent uh, agent, artificial networks, the same thing, uh, we cannot think uh, to solve the problem with. Uh, uh, all the knowledge we, we recognize uh, 
quickly the pattern of the problem, then we apply a policy. A policy is something that is already prepared to solve that problem. It's not the intelligent agent, we or the machine, artificial nature, with the, well, before we do something, we, we would be years uh, deciding when we are thirsty to drink a, a, a glass of water. Uh, it's not possible, we know that uh, well, there is production rules that, uh, well, the production rules in architecture is a solution, for example, that uh, the email suggests it was to ask to an architect how it does and what are their production rules. Well, uh, I don't know your name, <laughs> but uh, to do things, uh, well, I saw the, the scheme of the uh, house. The rooms, it's every architect makes that not exactly the same way as the, the goals of reasoning. It's not very different from the reason. He's trying to uh, join the rooms without, uh, without any rules in the middle. Uh, he's trying to connect them by some uh, distribution uh, uh, zones. And he's trying to spare space to be uh, more close. Well, the, those are the rules, the, the, what I call policies, that uh, uh, any architect, you uh, both forget that, yes, it's a machine that is going to do that, but uh, the thinking is uh, of an architect that's trying to do that. I don't know if it is. Uh, uh, of course, the architect has many other restraints and uh, many other not restraints, liberties. That, that helps, yes, that can uh, give you uh, some help, yes, because the, the, the solution you say, well, this is better, uh, is the best solution in optimizing these or these parameters. The architect can later use liberties to do, you know, because I have a lot of things consider, but it's a, a good help for, uh, well, when we ask the, the urbanist what he is doing, he is already made that policies, well, he has a straight line, a main, uh, a main road, well, maybe the urbanists will do that, <laughs> but secondly, the others don't do that, but we have the instruments to to, uh, to raise to certain uh, solutions or set solutions that only uh, it's possible to obtain many solutions that later we can uh, uh, analyze with other tools. Uh, for example, in the production rules, policy series be a great space of solutions and then we analyze for example in space syntax and we can choose where we want not so much uh, uh, entropy or uh, and uh, arrive to solutions that are different. Well there are factors we don't consider of course. There, there is one uh, important thing about architecture. architecture is not the sum of uh, the solution is not a, 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 a sum of solutions. Uh, it's more than that. Uh, to find a holistic solution for many problems uh, is not simply solving each of the components of the problem and put them all together. It's more than that. <laughs> uh, and that, that's what makes it difficult and that's also what makes it a challenge for uh, computation. But anyway, uh, I, I, I think that the, the idea that um, computers can replace designers is, is reasonably absurd in the sense that uh, uh, the design is probably one of the best achievements of the human mind. So uh, it will be the latest thing that we will be able to do with computers, I'm sure. Uh, computers will improve the way we design because if they can, <coughs> inform us a lot more, but uh, human decision will be needed anyway. Uh, 
because there, because of that particular issue, that it, it, it needs something more, and that that part is the difficult part. Um, I got a question, a bit naive maybe, uh, but uh, I've been interested to see the study of uh, a house from a mathematician, uh, being the study of a house, an inside place, and then see the point of view of of an uh, urbanism, urbanist. Uh, talking about an outside space. And mm, mm, my doubt is how the computational methods are willing or are uh, trying to uh, deal with the um, level of complexity that uh, the, ur the urban context uh, are offering to this to other space. I mean, uh, you were talking about a shape drama, but um, I found it really interesting, but I got a doubt that is a doubt um, shared with Guillermo all the time. We are having these discussions all the time, you know, uh, because we are still students and we don't have answers to these things. And it's how a uh, computational um, process deals with spontaneity, with spontaneous movements. And okay, maybe a, a computer student will send me spontaneous or synthesis because it's a rule behind, but um, somehow. Um, um, lectures of, uh, of, for example, Gilles Deleuze talking in a lateral way or talking about a, a, a context completely different from the way as Freud or even Noam Chomsky talking about structure behind the reality uh, makes me uh, or make us uh, be doubly about this situation. I mean, how is going to be grasped this, uh, this unexpected uh, situation or in, uh, and even if, if there is intentions behind uh, uh, people um, approaching this kind of process to try to grasp this uh, complexity and try to have, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Let me just give you an example on mathematics. Uh, fractals, for instance. Um, fractals are a field of mathematics that explains you uh, uh, very easily, sometimes with very simple uh, um, uh, rules or set very simple mathematics how certain very complex shapes uh, or uh, organization of self organization of, um, uh, of phenomena in, in, in nature organizes itself. Uh, um, it allows us to understand um, certain uh, <coughs> biological behaviors that we consider to be complex. It allows us to understand things like how, uh, um, uh, for instance, the, the branching of, uh, of trees works. Okay. Uh, it allows us to understand, and we always, I'm always talking about complex shapes. Okay. Uh, um, but the rules behind behind these uh, these shapes are really very uh, very simple. Um, so um, having some knowledge on, on, on mathematics and how we can understand, uh, how we can relate that, that, those um, uh, mathematical descriptions with phenomena that we see in reality uh, help, help us uh, understand or um, having a simpler vision of certain complex problems, let's say, uh, because then we can understand them in, in a different way. And this is actually the approach that Michael Batty has had to understand the behavior of cities, of city growth, things like that. Um, to yes. Uh, my question is for you. Uh, it's kind of related with what he told us about um, your rules. The, the thing that you show us is always in the perspective from the, uh, the inner the organization of the cellular of the house. Do you consider that in a future moment of your research to add uh, rules that to try to uh, organize the, the space that you show? Uh, having consideration the uh, outside, uh, some kind of uh, 
uh, outside context, some, some kind of uh, outside rules that can interact or can shape the, 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 the rules that goes to the, to the inside that, to, of the house, as you, as you show us. Or no, or just a... No, so it's like one by one step. So next step, what I'm working over is that uh, that if uh, to design a house such that each of the rooms should have window. So what should be the property of the graph or what should be the property of the computational schema such that the way you want to design, design it, consider as many rooms as you want, but each room should have a window. So you know it should be, window means it should be connected to the exterior. Is it possible first thing? So then we have to give the mathematical logic. Yeah, it is possible under these conditions. Under these conditions, it is not possible. Mm -hmm. So we check this feasibility. And if it is possible under these conditions, if it is satisfying these conditions, then here is a solution where each room is connected to the window. So like this is one problem on which I am working. So it's like it's always a discussion with the this the architects, especially the team where I am, design and operation group, it's extremely great team. So Professor Garao is there, then Professor Joseph Duarte the, is there. And it's, it's always like they put some questions that, okay, is it possible? Do you think that? And then I start thinking and then something comes out. I have a question. This, uh, it's it kind of comes me that all these uh, and action rules, patterns, and so there are so many. Uh, theory is uh, trying to reduce the number of equations. <laughs> well, in, uh, I see, there was a rule to, for the, in the Middle East to make the not character, but when they are uh, meters, they should have. Uh, Seven meters, three meters, or not. that was a production rule. Uh, they have a production rules for this, 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 this. I know about production rules. Well, this has been. Uh, it's, you know, uh, uh, improvement, historical improvement, till now, based on other rules, we have one theory, one equation. Uh, so, so uh, structural problems is only one equation. <laughs> well, we have three or four formulations. One of them is in one equation, there is one rule. Of course, this is not a rule, this is a theory. We cannot use that simply to produce immediately a, a structure. And that is, is it possible to do the same thing? I am, for example, is a, this, the, this rule is not for structures. It, it, this rule is a general rule of uh, physics. It, it involves the minimum energy. We minimize the energy of the system, is what these uh, rules say. Uh, it's true for structures, uh, <coughs> for. Uh, uh, for the mechanical system, for the electrical system, we could say there is in physics one oops, uh, only rule for all of physics <laughs> with several expressions. Well, I see thousands of patterns and rules, and uh, is it possible to, well, is this a way to <laughs> condense that? Uh, After that rule, you have a lot of complexity. I mean, yes. this is the starting point. Uh, <laughs> but we have the other rules, and then we reduce that to one theory, and beginning in that theory, we create the rules nicely to take Okay, uh, let, uh, let, let me give you just, uh, uh, I, I have to tell a story, okay? The story begins with uh, in something that uh, your presentation was actually uh, talking about, uh, the idea of parametrics, which is a little bit related with blobby stuff. Okay, I don't think that parametrics needs to be related with blobby stuff. We can talk about you know uh, boxes which are parametric. They can uh, 
expanding. And we, we can even talk about parametric systems which repeat a certain number of elements, and that number of elements is one of the parameters. So uh, I don't really agree with uh, the, some of the expressions of parametricism that Patrick Schumacher uh, sells as being parametricism. But anyway, uh, uh, I had many discussions when I was in Delft with, uh, um, uh, uh, with people from my group uh, that worked on this blobby uh, stuff. And uh, I have some doubts about blobby shapes that are being explored because geometrically we, we, we can explore them. And the reasons why I have those doubts are related with something that I think is universal in architecture. First, if we are thinking about architecture as something that is built on Earth, okay, outside the planet, might be another thing, uh, we have uh, as a first uh, universal thing, we have gravity. It's everywhere. Whatever we do in architecture, we have to deal with gravity. And from gravity comes the horizontal and the vertical uh, elements, which means orthogonal. Okay, so there's a reason for treating uh, spaces as orthogonal spaces. Also, when you uh, consider a packing algorithm with orthogonal shapes, you can pack without any uh, voids. Meaning there's no spatial uh, waste, meaning that you cannot optimize solutions using those uh, uh, relations. And, 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 and this is something that is more or less uh, driven by uh, this constant thing on Earth, which is gravity. So uh, it doesn't mean that we, uh, that we, we have to put everything you know, shaped orthogonally, because there are other issues. But it means that there is a reason to pursue those shapes. Uh, another th thing which is uh, uh, more or less uh, um, universal is um, you have always some environment around you, some environmental conditions. So the environmental conditions also affect the way you design. Uh, and we're talking about you know, different, there are differences depending on the place on Earth that you, that, uh, that you are, but there's always environment surrounding you, and you have to respond to that environment with intelligence. So that's another more or less universal topic. And there is this third one. There's always people around, and you're always producing things for people. So there's also a cultural context. And that's another thing that is always present, and it's always different depending on the place. And architecture is something that needs to deal directly with these three constants. And if it doesn't deal with these constants, you don't have architecture. Uh, and I think then, when we start thinking about blobby stuff, just for the sake of exploring the shape, we're forgetting the constants uh, in, in uh, what shapes architecture. I hope this uh, answers uh, <laughs> There are three things that we need to consider to produce architecture. The rest are tools, imagination, whatever. I'm sorry for the last time, but about the last topic that you talked about, it's a cultural context. Um, how we could deal with cultural context uh, as standardized as they are, in contrast with a classical conception, phenomenologist conception, where a culture was situated on a specific space time, but nowadays we see a huge, huge mix of everything, mix of networks, mix of, of even located space. I mean, it's a huge confusion how uh, architecture deals uh, with, with that. That's a very good question. And uh, I think the answer is very much related with the work that Joao uh, presented this, this morning. Uh, uh, we still need to understand a lot of stuff uh, about these issues because they're a little bit more complex. But I think that one of the ways of approaching it 
probably not the only way, but it's one of the ways, and that's the, one of the ways where computers can play a role, um, is to uh, measure a lot of properties of our physical space and co try to correlate uh, the, uh, the patterns of our physical space with patterns of behavior. This means measuring a lot of stuff. And when we, uh, when we start finding correlations between these two things, uh, we gain knowledge about the way uh, you know, this complexity behaves, or the reason behind the complexity, so let's say. Sometimes I know, because <laughs> buildings live uh, longer than people, much, much longer so the, the life changes, the, the shape stays uh, for a long time. Yeah, but How can you correlate with them? But this morning when, when the question about uh, if you were measuring things uh, on, on different uh, time scales or oh, just yeah. uh, 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 one moment, it, it actually occurred to me that uh, when you measure them at a particular moment and you find correlations with the patterns of use at that particular moment, you will find correlations of the state of things at the, that moment and the way people are using that. So you might find that probably certain, uh, uh, um, let's say, uh, um, arrangements of attributes in a particular place uh, are related with the way that place is used. It might explain why, uh, for instance, the land value of that space is lower, it's less used by you know, or something like that. But it, it, it basically, first you need to produce that, okay? And I, I'm sure that something will change uh, and that uh, in a long time that explains why at a certain moment, uh, let's say a square or a street is not uh, very lively and there's no much use and the land value is low, something like that. And then 10 years after, it, it, it changes. Um, Many of the patterns are probably not just related with shape. So uh, uh, what I believe is that you will not find the solutions looking only at the physical aspects. Uh, you will find solutions correlating physical aspects with other attributes of the spaces. And probably more complex attributes, even economical attributes and things like that. Um, but you know, some discussion needs to be done about that. So. Very well. So I think we're getting a little late. So we're going to finish this session. Thank you very much. And. Uh,